Welcome, I'm Adam Bazalgette, two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner and founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today we're going to talk about the shanks. Stay tuned. Well, hey, the shanks aren't a fun subject for sure, but they can cause a lot of problems, both mentally and physically in your golf. Gonna show you today something interesting. A lot of people hit shanks and don't even know they do it, which of course makes it a lot less likely they can change it. Now, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of free content for you. Let's get started. And you see that ball roll dead straight, but roll nonetheless, that was actually a significant shank. That and many other kind of outcomes can vary just according to just where you hit it on the hosel. So a lot of people don't even realize they've shanked it when they've done that. Let me show you a close up and you'll see what I mean. So we're all familiar with the, the classic shank. It's partly on the club face, partly on that rounded inside corner of the ball. And of course you get the classic shank outcome, that 45 degree type of shot. Even if you don't have a lot of golf knowledge, if you've been around, you'll know right away it was a shank. But what about these slightly more subtle ones? What, let's say, if you hit it directly on the heel like that, listen, there's no loft there. You're gonna get a very thuddy, unsolid, stingy kind of a hit, but it's pretty much gonna roll relatively straightforward quite a bit shorter with less energy likely than a true top that's off the middle of the club face or a true thin shot like that. So you could get that outcome. That's the difference of just a fraction of an inch really. You could get a shot that you hit mostly on the club face and barely touch the hosel. Then you'll get decent height, certainly well short of normal distance, but it will be almost like a big slice. Believe me though, that is a very big possibility. A lot of people do that. It's not likely you'd open the club face so much to just start the ball significantly right. Worse yet, of course, if you get on the other side of the equator with the center of the hosel, even just a bit, ball's going to start to top and go this way. I've seen shots, and you probably have too, where people must have hit it here, and the ball will literally ricochet back towards their lead leg there. So a little bit of difference in here can cause a great deal of difference depending on exactly what side of the front of that hosel you hit it. And some of these, as I say, are pretty difficult to detect because they don't look like a classic shank. Let me just tell you something here, and I say this a lot, but the brain is incredible with the adjustments it can make and the ways it can fix things and compensate. Just incredible. But believe me, if you don't know something's happening, in other words, if there's no clear feedback, that's, that mechanism's pretty much shut off. So you've got to know that these things are happening to you, and as I've showed you, it's not always that easy from ball flight to tell. So let's have a look here, and what we're going to do is we're going to place a second ball a little bit beyond the toe, assuming I made solid contact with the original ball. If you don't want to do a second ball, you could just jab a tee in the ground there. And what happens, obviously, if I don't touch that ball, I know I didn't shank it. If I hit it somewhat in the heel or near the shank, I will barely tick this ball and roll it over there. If I come in here and slam into both balls, I know it was a major league hosel shot or shank shot. So this is probably what you don't want to see. You do that, you're in the serious shanking category there. Okay, so now let's just say it's true that there are all kinds of different flaws that can lead to shanks. Some coming out, some coming in, so there's some real things to consider there. And at scratchgolfacademy.com, my website, we offer courses in all parts of the game, including an entire course on shanking and all these sort of problems. But let's confine our discussion today to two things. One, diagnosing the shank and what kind of a shank you hit which we've just talked about there with the close up and the two ball drill and the other, at least how you can use this genius of the brain to start making some compensations without necessarily a lot of technical knowledge. And here's what I would do. This is a real foundational premise to making changes in anything in your golf swing. And that is whether it be club face angle at impact or whatnot swing plane, always start by playfully making a significant adjustment and then come in and make the adjustments more refined and more small. One of the things that gives people a ton of tension when they're trying to fix a shank is they're, okay, they're inch or two off center on contact. Not that big a difference, a meaningful difference, but what they want to do is they then want to hit a perfectly solid shot, and it's too, it's too restricting mentally. It puts too much pressure on you. Do something significantly different, make a big difference, 
get some relaxation and confidence back, and then you can make the difference a small one. So here's a little drill I would suggest for you. Here's a golf ball I'm gonna swing at. I'm gonna place a ball, as I did earlier in the video, on that side of it. A little more space there, except in this case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up to the outside ball, and I'm simply gonna make a swing and use my intuition to make the best contact I can with the inside ball. So let's try that. Reasonably solid shot there. Now you may say, how'd you do that? Move the club about this far in the middle of the swing. I don't know how I did it. It's not that difficult. I know you can do it too. As I say, what this fosters is a sense of, hey, I'm not out of control with my body. I could do something different. You'd be amazed how easily and quickly you can go over and find that other ball, even if you don't hit it dead flush, which of course would be a quantum adjustment from hitting the shank. It'll give you a little bit of confidence. It'll give you a little sense of, hey, I can work this out. And again, it gives you a chance to feel something significantly different, not slightly different. And from there, you can make some progress. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Again, would love to have you subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot of free content, plan to be bringing a lot more your way. Scratchgolfacademy.com is my website. Got all kinds of material there for you. Complete courses in every category of the game that I hope you'll take advantage of. Thanks again for your time. I hope this video helped you.